The latest edition of Pokemon has arrived, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Now hold up, I'm sure most of you are thinking, the game's only just come out, why are you calling it bad? I really like the game, your opinion is horrible. UNSUBSCRIBED! Now while all of those comments are quite valid, let's take a step back and review the game. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are the newest addition to the Pokemon franchise, ported to Nintendo Switch with the objective of becoming champion in the new Mediterranean Spain inspired region named Paldea, or Paleda, or however the hell you want to pronounce this. Which is great, it adds a theme to the region like previous games, Pokemon Sword and Shield being based on the UK, Pokemon Arceus being on however you say this. You get the point, it's a cool, new, unique region for us to explore, and obviously like any other game has unique themes depending on which version you buy. Pokemon Skull is based on the past, where you may encounter more older designed Pokemon, and Violet is the opposite being based on the future. But hold on! What are these legendaries? This may be a biased opinion, but these legendaries are probably the worst in Pokemon history. I mean, just compare these to a legendary such as Groudon. What? Nintendo just completely bottled it with these designs. And they do take a different approach where you get given these Pokemon's tames, similar to Sun and Moon's Taurus and other Pokemon, for travel. So you already have them, but you can only actually use them at the very end of the game where there's minimal content left to complete. This game also branches off into other quests such as Team Star, which is pretty much the game's version of Team Skull, and then the Titan Challenges. The main objective, and one which most want to do, the gym challenge, sticks to the rest of the games, with the only difference being that you're enrolled in a Pokemon school, okay, and as part of a treasure hunt you go off and become the champion. I don't know, for this game, becoming the champion becomes more like luster, compared to previous games where it actually feels rewarding. In previous games you're doing it independently, and the fact that you're 10 to 11 years old beating these champions creates a sense of pride. But now that you're shackled to the Pokemon Academy or school, it hinders onto that feeling, in my opinion. Furthermore, sometimes these side missions can feel like such a drag. Some people may just want to play the main story like the other games and complete all the gyms to become champion, but it's almost like this game forces you to do these other tasks which could feel overwhelming. The game is an interesting take that obviously is new compared to what we've seen in past games. The inclusion of multiple characters wanting you to complete certain aspects of the game, and the rival is great and it's kind of similar to Pokemon Sun and Moon's rival. Also don't get me started on the graphics and bugs for this game. Battling trainers in certain spots or areas would make the camera bug so you can see underneath the map. And graphics were extremely disappointing. Not improving from Pokemon Sword and Shield. This game feels more like a money grab than an actually cared and thought out game. Compare this game to Pokemon Sun and Moon, which did the same concept by making the game different compared to others, yet did it in the right way, with the main objective of becoming the champion and the usual villain group interrupting you and that's it. But with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, they put in all these other quests and parts of the story in along with it, so it could feel more of a drag like I mentioned before, and I'm making the game have a worse pace. And the starters of this generation are, well... Yeah, their designs are weaker than any previous starters in these games, apart from this guy. But even little things about this game make it bad, such as unnecessary nerfs for Zamazenta and other Pokemon for no reason. And NPCs no longer having any interactions. They feel like cardboard cutouts as none of them offer cool side quests for regional Pokemon or items, which just makes NPCs, well, NPCs. Also, the main bonus of this game called Terrastalize. Yeah turns your Pokemon into a giant bloody crystal. We went from a super cool mega evolution to Z moves, then Gigantamax, Pico. to having candles over the heads of our Pokemon. This has to be the most underwhelming bonus power we've got in the franchise. But at the same time, this does look beautiful. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are also the lowest rated games the franchise has ever seen with many people stating the game is the worst out of the 20 plus years these games have been running for. The main contingency for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is the performance issues of the game, which we've already covered. Carrying on to more graphical issues, the game overall is just extremely basic, with basic geometry being low quality, 
ugly tile textures and two simple designs. And at a distance, assets being completely stripped of most detail not containing those tiny details such as shadows. Even things such as getting hardlocked exist. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it for this video. We've talked about some positives about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and obviously some negatives. Overall, this game is obviously not performing as well as previous entries, but if you're a genuine fan of Pokemon and you've played literally every game and you're so obsessed with it, then I guess this game is kind of okay, but it is definitely very different compared to the past ones and is not being well received by the general public. But yeah, anyway, if you are here, thank you for watching all the way up to this point, and yeah, I'll see you all in the next video.